So for the final weeks of the season on both the WTA and the ATP, we had some massive tournaments this week in Basel and Vienna. We also had the WTA Elite Trophy for the first time in four years. Let's go have a look at who won last week and how that impacts the rankings. So starting at the Elite Trophy, we had Hadaj Maya taking out Zhang in a couple of tie breaks, 7-6, seven, 7-6. Six, seven, six. And she got a nice boost in the rankings to finish off the season. On the men's side of things, starting in Basel, we had Felix Ogeliasim going back to back in Basel, beating her catch 7-6, seven, 7-6 six, seven, six in that final. And in Vienna, we had Sinner taking on Medvedev again in a final. And again, Sinner getting the win, 7-6, 4-6, to beat Medvedev for the second time and win his fourth trophy of the year. And with only a couple of weeks left, some much needed confidence going into the final section of the year. Let's go have a look at the players that are going up in the rankings outside the top 10 this week. Adaj Maya, she goes up eight spots, number 11 in the world after winning the WTA Elite Trophy. Zhang, she also goes up three spots, number 15, which is a career high for her, after making the final of that trophy as well. And Shevchenko, he goes up 20 spots, number 63 in the world, after having a really good week in Basel, getting to the quarterfinals as a quali. So he's up a career high as well. So some players there getting a big boost due to some good results. Players are going down in the rankings this week. Benchic, she goes down three spots, number 17 in the world, after losing a lot of points from this time last year. Kudamatova, also going down three spots to number 19, in the world. And Stan Vavrinka dropping out of the top 50, going down six spots after dropping a lot of points from this time last year as well. So again, players dropping down in the rankings as we finish off the season for most. Right, let's start with the WTA rankings here because we don't actually have any changes heading into the WTA finals next week. So it's more of just a recap with Sabalenka at number one, Fiontek at two, Goff at number three, Rabakina at four, Pagula at five, Wondrusova goes in at six, Jabur at seven, Mukova at eight, Zachary at nine, and Krajikova stays at number 10 as the year comes to a close. But with the WTA Finals coming up next week, the final WTA Finals part of the ranking show next Monday, we will have some big changes because you can see there the points are very, very close. And of course, there is still a chance that Sviontek can get back to number one before the year's end. Let's go have a look at the race of the finals. And of course, we have it all locked in. But just to confirm, Sabalenka stays at one and Sviontek at two with Goff at three, Rabakina at four, Pagula at five, Jabur at six, Von Drusiver at seven, Sakari at eight, Krajikova at nine. She'll be the first alternate and Keys will be the second alternate at number 10. Of course, Mukova having to withdraw from the WTA Finals, and that's why Zachary got promoted. So going into the WTA Finals, that's what it's going to look like. Let's go over to the men's rankings now because we had some massive changes ahead of the final weeks of the year. Djokovic, though, stays at number one with Elkarez at number two, Medvedev at three, and Sinner at four, Rublev at five. But Tsitsipas, he overtakes Runa to get back to number six, pushing Runa down to number seven after Runa dropped a lot of points from making the final last year in Basel. Rude stays there at number eight. And Zverev, he goes up to number nine, pushing Fritz down to number 10. And with the final massive event next week in Paris, there are going to be some really interesting changes ahead of the ATP finals in a week's time. So those players that are on really close points, sort of Rublev, Runa, and City Pass, a big week next week can change a lot. And looking at the all-important finals race for the men, there's only one big event left. There is still events left after that, but there's not too many chances to get points. So Djokovic, he's still at number one with Elkrez at number two, Medvedev at three, Sinner at four. But Rublev, he qualifies for the finals for another year. Only needed a couple of wins in Vienna and he got them. So he is the fifth player to qualify with three spots left up for grabs. City Pass stays there at number six with Zverev at seven, Runa at eight, Fritz at number nine, just behind, and her catch. He takes Rude out of the top 10, replacing him after making the final in Basel. So going into the final, there are some big, big chances for some of these guys. And that's not just the guys in the top 10. This is guys outside the top 10 that aren't too far away. So watch out for this time next week. We could have the whole finals race over and some of those top players do qualify with good results in Paris. So there it is. That is the rankings. Of course, we've got maybe two more of these ranking shows left to go because the ADB finals are almost up and the WTA finals and this time next week, we'll know who won that and we'll be going through the final rankings for the year for the WTA. But let me know down in the comments below. Who is going to qualify for the ATP Finals? We've got three spots left for, gra up for grabs. We've got about seven people, I think, realistically, could make the finals with a good week in Paris. Of course, City Pass next in line to qualify. Zverev's there as well. But let me know down in the comments below. Who do you think is going to make the ATP Finals at the end of the year? We've got some big matches coming up next week. Some big points on the line. Who's going to pass and who's going to fail?